This strategic planning, usually we always do them for five years. So this one was prepared in 2020 and it can be used up to 2025. However, it can also be updated if certain things are changed and you can you want to update the, the strategic planning, that's a good idea. The strategic planning for Way of Life Health Center Lusaka, Zambia, Africa has been prepared to outline the values and visions, goals and missions of the Way of Life Health Center along with a transition proposal in order to achieve it. So as we scroll down, we will simply continue page by page because it's a PDF file and uh, that's how you can obtain the information. As you can see here, this is a basic strategic planning done for business, but it can be adapted for God's business. We have much to learn sometime from the children of the world. We're told in the Bible that many times the ch children of the world are wiser than the children of the light sometimes wise for their own interests, but at the same time, if we can uh, obtain some important information, it's good to also rely on learning these things. So the basic uh, strategic planning always follow this. It's give you an introduction as far as what kind of a context we're dealing with. We also look at the environmental scan, the values, the target group and stakeholders, we will explain in a minute all these terms, what it means, it's quite simple. The strategic services, needs and places, the vision, mission, strategic outcomes, strategic priorities and goals, and the resource allocations. And then we offer a conclusion. It is good to have a plan of action. That's basically what a strategic planning is. We do not have here a forecast budget because this is basically already established as far as the center, the small center in Lusaka. It's very small, and we are told in the spirit of prophecy that we should establish small but many centers rather than putting a large expense on one and then deplete other regions of having also or the big cities of having an opportunity to receive an outreach and basically leaving everybody else without it. That's not the idea. We want to have sufficient fund to do it with other program as well. The case of uh, Zambia here, when we analyze it in 2020, is based on 13 Zambian Better Living Centers. Why 13? You will understand in a few minutes as we present to you the context how we do a strategic plan. And you may want to listen carefully if you are interested, because this is a pattern that has been repeated more than once so far. And it's basically easy to follow when you repeat it. Strategic goals and mission outreach. This is basically our motto, if you could say, SMART. It is specific, measurable, achievable, relevant to the mission, and timely. So as you can see, it has been already prepared in July 20, 2020, and it has been edited in 2021. However, it's valid until 2025. Psalm chapter two, verse eight, we are told, ask of me, meaning of God, and I shall give thee the Eden for thy inheritance and the outermost parts of the earth for thy possession. What is the context of preparing a strategic planning on how to reach out to the big city. The context is found in Council on Health, page 506, written by Mrs. Ellen G. White. As religious aggression subverts the liberties of our nation, those who would stand for freedom of conscience will be placed in unfavorable positions. For their own sake, they should, while they have opportunity, become intelligent in regard to disease, its cause, prevention, and cure. And those who would do so would find a field of labor anywhere. So here we have religious aggression, subverting, meaning removing our liberty of, con of, of conscience, liberty of uh, religion. And now it is combined with health, meaning that we will have to deal with many people who are sick, and that will open up the way for us, even though we might be under a lot of pressure, to reach out to these people. 
And if you look at 2020, 2021, this was not planned. When we did this program, we had never planned that we were going to do it at the time of the coronavirus. This particular strategic planning has been prepared already 20 years ago. So this has been applied already. We have used it before. So therefore, this was not necessarily prepared, but God knows everything. And now more than ever, with the freedom that has been lost because of the pandemic, so-called, we can see too that it seems to really fit with what Mrs. White is saying here. The church have been closed down, the synagogue, the temples throughout the whole world, which for those of you who probably know and those who do not know, it's a precedent. There was never any precedent in history of something like that. It's unprecedented in history. So we have created a precedent by not, um, not opening the church, the churches and the synagogue and obeying the government. It's a precedent. And in certain country like uh, Canada, for example, there are actually some lawyers that have been hired by churches in order to defend their rights of opening their churches because they believe it's a essential service. If it's not necessarily physical, like alcohol would be or hospital, it is spiritual and it is also according to God for us to gather together as brethren. So there are many reasons we could present in the court of law, which some people right now are doing, which is very admirable, and that we should be able to answer to those problems as well and be qualified to speak up and say why we believe this is a breach of our rights. And this is what you will be receiving in the next section having to do with religious liberty and um, standing in the court of law. Now, this is the way we establish. We will not go through the whole strategic planning for today because we need to understand a very important principle, how to prepare a strategic planning. A strategic planning in any business, it's the same way. You need to know your target. You need to know who you're going to deal with. And we know that this is for, med for work, for medical missionary work for the Lord, but it's still a business. We still have to approach it in the side of a business because it will need a budget with expenses and revenues and you will have to do bookkeeping so people who do not like to do bookkeeping or don't even know how to do it well we teach that as well but at the same time you still need to be very serious because you will be manipulating money and this money is for the work of the lord so here the target the way we have prepared it is we looked on the internet we Google internet and we found out the 13 largest cities and provinces of Zambia. And this is typical. We do that all the time, whether it's for Canada or whether we were to do any other uh, countries in Africa. We, we realize that Africa is a continent. It's not just a country like Canada, but the principle is the same. So here we have, say you have 50 countries and you're planning to do this is your targets. You want to work in 50 countries of the continent of Africa. That's exactly the same pattern as this one. You will take these 50 countries. You would go on Google. It's easier than having to research. This is so magnificent to have Google. And they will give you all this information. That's where we got that from. So, for example, Lusaka being the capital city, we show a population, and this is very recent. The population you're showing is one point, say, two sixty-seven. So you rounded up one point three million of population. A Kitwe in Copper Belt, four hundred thousand nine hundred and fourteen. It's very precise. This other one here is Dola, three hundred and ninety-four thousand. We're just going to round it up for the sake of numbers, which you see. Kabwe is another big city, it seems. Uh, Shingola, Mulfirela, Luantia, please forgive my um, English pronouncing, pronunciation, Livingstone, Kasama, Shipata, Kalulushi, Mazabuka, and Mensa. So these are the cities that we have targeted because they have a larger population. We actually chose to add Mensa here. It should have been a little bit higher, but it didn't come in that order. So we just put it here 
because um, our administrator is from Mensa, so we wanted to be able to target that big city, which is actually bigger than these cities. It should have been uh, at that level here. It's it's actually a number six, not a number 13. However, bear with us. This is the way we have set it up, making it easier for our graphic. And so we have right now, we have established targeted cities with population. So that's already a big start. So we have the cities where they are and the population. That's how you start your strategic planning. If you intended to do only one city, then you target only that city. But usually when it's um, a large country, like Zambia is large, the same we have done for Canada, then you target particularly that country. And then you bring out those cities that you want to reach out. You may be ambitious and you may want to choose 30 cities. Well, then that's fine. You can work um, for the next, for the rest of your life, probably to establish 30 centers. It's a lot of work. So that's why it's kind of wise to start with the big cities. Mrs. White calls it the big cities. You may live in a city of um, 5,000 people and you may want to do your target there, which is fine. We do not tell you what to do, but those people who want to work with way of life, this is usually the way we establish it. And why we started the center last year in Lusaka, because it's the capital city. So in every city, in every province, in every country, you will have to target the larger population. And the larger population also will pass it on to the lesser population and everybody will hear about it anyway. And that's the idea of it. All right, so now we're gonna go for the next plan of action, which is very important as well. So here is what we do in those 13 cities once we want to start to establish them. Like Lusaka, for example, we already have a school there for more than a year now. And the idea is to reach through gospel medical missionary evangelism and you establish your Better Living Center, especially in the city, because now we're dealing with the city, vegan restaurants serving over 70% raw food and juicing, conference room, Better Living Center, health food with natural remedies. Now, you may not have to have all of these items. Usually though, as we mentioned with the, the chart, you want to go back to that chart the vegan restaurant always come with a better living center never establish one or the other it may take you a little while to do them both together so far as we have established some of those uh, items the better living center and the vegan restaurant we have always tried to do them together in the city and then you live in the country so here in Lusaka, we have the better living center which is a school of training at the same time, which is ideal. That's what you're supposed to have anyways. The conference room become your little school. And then you're supposed to have also a place in the country where you live. Right now in Lusaka, most of our students are country living and uh, we are planning for a project for country living as well. But it might be a bit different than what the planning is for all the centers. So this is to be one by one you are supposed to check them out and see how that can be established so the small better living center usually is supposed to be purchased in the country mrs white says and we can lease in the in the city and what do we do there well we teach the 12 step to health the 10 commandment the eight laws of health the six natural remedies the four food group the two natures of man and we use a lot of visual aids and material like the website and the schedule, of course, this can be new for most people, but we have been based on the biblical calendar of the Feast of Leviticus 23, including the 70th Sabbath for many, many years. So these projects have been started with the first one we had on the way of life was 1989. Since then, we have had five in different provinces, but right now, as it stands, we have come back and done a smaller one in Toronto, Ontario, and this is where the vegan restaurant and the health center attached together are. The bigger the city, the more expensive it will be. 
So if you want a big, big place, first of all, it's not the plan. Be prepared that it's going to be expensive. And if it's small, then it's better to establish more than one. And then you can establish in different part of that big city. Because when you have a million people, a small place may not be necessarily um, easy to target a lot of population together. So here we have a conducting an environmental scan. There are things we're going to pass by. This is important when, where you want to establish it. And uh, when you pray, because this is all based on faith, asking the Lord where you want me to do this. And you want to fast too to make sure that this is the call for you to do this. And especially if you can establish it with a group of people, but not too many. Too many people sometimes can be complex. If you have a few people that you trust, one or two people, you can start with that. And uh, basically you pray a lot and you read those information, which are very important if you believe in strategic planning. This one is one of the samples that can be followed. And of course, the factors that can bring your organization that might impact the achievement of your goal, they are positive factors and negative. The negative is you may lack faith, you may lack education but also it can be in the area where you are people could lack education in this matter don't believe in vegan don't believe in instruction and good health they could be prejudiced also you could also have been lacking discretion before you establish this program you don't usually go around and and tell the people even this right now we put it for the time being for uh, our instruction and uh, once it's um once we have passed by, we're just going to do one without any uh, names. We had this one right now already, so we use this one. But usually we do not give our strategic planning in public, and definitely not your, uh, you do not give your um, budget, your forecast budgets. This is totally business personal, and you, you establish it, and then you can open up. So... This is not for advertising. It's simply for instruction to be educated on how to do it. So if you like this one, if you like this particular strategic planning, then you can simply adapt your target, your cities. And you can start only with one if you like. It's, it's nice to have a few, but if you prefer to start only with one, but always pick the bigger, the, the largest population. That's what we recommend before you start with smaller and growing to bigger. Now, Basically, again, the economic new training program, you have to also want to become self-supporting and you may have a lack of funds. So here at Way of Life, we have been sponsoring the one in Lusaka, but it doesn't mean that we're going to sponsor 13 of them because the idea is eventually even Lusaka have to become self-supporting. If anything was to happen where the funds comes from, sometimes even connection with uh, transfers of funds can become difficult. So we do not want anything to shut down because we cannot transfer funds. So the idea is when you establish the restaurant and the health center, you've got to keep your overhead as low as possible. Overhead is usually like the rent, the electricity, the telephone, the Wi-Fi. So these are overhead, meaning extra expense. And this we can help you with your budget in establishing that. But you have to have numbers. You cannot just throw fictive numbers and, and figure that's how much it's going to cost you for a set of budget. So we need to help you with that as well. It's a business. Basically, it's a business. And if you do not have experience in business, that's fine. You always have to start from somewhere. But however, you need to follow. If you do not believe in recommendation like this, then perhaps you will have to do it on your own and learn the hard way. There are two ways of setting up a business. You follow some basic, basic principles, or you just go every which way. You make a lot of mistakes, going to spend a lot of money, and you still will not get anywhere. That's not the way we work at Way of Life. That's why we instruct our people how to do it. And this is not a franchise. We're not a franchise because we're a charitable organization, but it works the same as a franchise where Everybody that wants to do this project with Way of Life, they have to follow a certain protocol. And it goes from the food we serve, it goes from what we wear, even what we look like. And all of this is very important because we need to give a united front in front of the world. 
Now, the community where you want to establish it, uh, you want to make sure they're receptive to the concepts, but sometimes they simply probably would need education and that's where this is coming from and the cultural area where you want to go at. But the, the idea of this is better to pray and ask the Lord than trying to judge for yourself if the people will be nice to you. Just pray and the Lord will send you where you're meant to be. Now, political, you need to meet also the requirements. You need to have your license and your registration. Like we of life in um, Zambia is registered. And because we're charitable, they do not have higher high fee. It's not like a for-profit business. This is an, a charitable. It's not non-profit. It's a higher level. It's charitable level. So we do have, uh, we pay tax, but then we have a return on our tax. And uh, for countries that do not have any tax, well, bless your heart. We have taxes in Canada. And so these are protocols that we need to know before we establish a budget with you and before we can get going with the project. Now, you can do it on your own. You don't have to work with Way of Life. You can even choose this strategic planning if you like to get establishing with a group of friends and things like that. But I'm going to tell you a secret too. When you form a partnership, it is not biblical. The Bible does not approve of partnership. It is better if you have workers with you, but you always need a leader. And that leader should be the one who is basically the administrator. So it's good to want to work with friends, but partnership in the Bible is not recommended. Now, what kind of a resource you're going to need? Well, you're going to need manpower and they're going to need to be trained. And you also need the connection with the public that you well perceive. And it means a lot to the public when they see a new business established that you're friendly, you keep the area clean, you're offering good food. When it's time to do seminar, you're always on time and you're very enthused about it and you show that you love what you're doing. So there are qualities that um, if you do not have these kind of a quality, well, you may want to find somebody that has had them and then you can, uh, two of you can establish a, a beautiful business. Not everybody is... Um, find it easy to deal with people, but they're very good in business and administration. So that's the kind of a people you can bring together to do this magnificent work. Now, there are some areas of strength, especially if you have been established in the area where you want to do this business, you're known, and uh, you have good dependable employees, management experience, understanding the mission, further development or, or project. Now, as far as the employees is concerned, you have to be extremely careful because your overhead will be that big part. Sometimes it's higher than rent. So you don't want to establish a big business where you're going to need a lot of employees and then your overhead is so high that you have to close within uh, six months. So this has to be all calculated. The Bible says that before you build a tower, you have to sit down and count the cost. And some people do not think like that. They think, oh, I'll just get going and the Lord will bless. Well, there are certain things you need to do to understand how this is run like a business. It's for the Lord, but it's run like a business. Now we have here the values of our program, which we invite you to look at. The one that we believe here is the organization believe about each value, the personal values. This has to do with the person who is running the business. We believe in values based on biblical principles, namely truthfulness, integrity, transparency, freedom of expression, freedom of conscience, freedom of religion, upholding all the biblical statutory laws and sanctuary teaching. Now, our value also includes educational values based on health principles, because that's what we're establishing for. And you can look into character development, knowledge of anatomy, especially if you start teaching and giving presentation, you need to use the right term and, and know you don't have to be a specialist, but the beauty about teaching is you're entitled to your books. It's like uh, once you graduate in college and university, it's not like when you were in secondary and you're not allowed to look at your book, they call it cheating. But higher level usually, especially if you do chemistry like I did, very often you're allowed to do to take your book to do your exam but the answer is not there per se they just you can refer to it and then you are able to resolve whatever question it is so 
It's good to have good books at hand in anatomy, physiology, know, your, know the human body. We teach all that in our program, the brain nerves, the mind, by applying and teaching also the eight laws of health, principles of nutrition, and natural ways for caring for the body in case of sickness. So we can see here that they are definitely different approach to business, and this is the way we run ours. And we encourage you to uh, definitely look into it and read all this material, which you can find in the 144,000 teachers in the menu. And then you go simply to the method number seven. This one is method number seven. And you click on the PDF and you will have all this information. The one thing that we like here very much is the relational empowerment, empowerment because we want to empower people. We do not want to do it for them. We're here to teach the people, and I'm not just talking about uh, people who work with you, your clients. We believe in offering training through education and support to all these different levels of society everywhere, since health and well-being touch all levels of humanity, and by reflecting more and more the basic values, principles, and talents to uphold and encourage all. So these, there might be question asked regarding this, and we're going to leave a few minutes at the end of the program in order for you to have an opportunity to speak to the people present at, at uh, conferences, and then this way you can have a better understanding. And uh, if the answers are not there, well, you may want to ask, and we will answer them at the next session. So here the target group and the stakeholders, again, these are terminology in business, but they're very easy to understand. Your target groups is always the one you're going to give services, programs, and activity. Your stakeholders are the people who can help you to achieve what you're planning to do. So your target group will be those you will serve at the restaurant, sorry, those that you serve in the conference room, the treat room, treatment room, the center in the country, and even the greenhouse products. So this is basically what you will be presenting, uh, you will be dealing with, this is your target group, the people you will be dealing with your business. While the stakeholders, you could have uh, investors, you could have tourists, those who may want to copy the whole program idea and join the expansion program throughout Zambia, for example, throughout Africa, this is the purpose. So those stakeholders, they're not the same as your client. They are basically people who really appreciate this business. They see some value into it. And who knows? They might say, hey, I want to give you a donation. And so you have to check on that first before you accept any money because we do not do anything under the tables. It has to be declared. And because every country is different, so we cannot advise you what to do with donation but we can definitely search it and see how to approach it when you're dealing with this. Now, the services and the needs, they are a few highlight, and then you can look at what we're proposing. It looks like a lot, but you don't have to do them all. They are just proposals. So the two main um, services that we offer is educational and training and education and training and professional development. The idea of the education and the training, of course, is the vegan restaurant and the health center in the city, the better living center in the country, country living, good food box, which are organic products that we sell to clients and many clients, sometimes they do not even know good food. They do not know good vegetable and fruit. These are not perishable. Um, they are not just necessarily all perishable. You can also have some produce that can be preserved, like even teaching them how to do preserves. Then of course it includes through your education and training, you will be able to teach and give health seminar, nutrition class, natural remedy class, health evaluation, homeschool and tutoring program, Bible class, and full club of present events and in home services. The professional development is to facilitate skill workshop. Many people do not quite know what is life skill and social skills. So this is very important to learn that as well. For example, being always on time is a skill. It's not always given. It's something that needs to be practiced. Being able to speak in public, 
some people can be very shy and they practice and learn how to become very comfortable with the public that becomes a social skill and lifestyle educator has a lot of those skills especially life skills you need to deal with a lot of people young and old and this is developed through practice and learning as well on the job training program this is what we do you don't need to go to school and get a, a degree in order to do it we do teach and we do train bookkeeping and we do different programs so you can learn very quickly how you can set up a business it's a self-supporting program so usually you do not uh, expect to have money to be paid to you so if you want to start a business you have to make sure you have a bit of cash but before you have the cash you have to make sure that you have a forecast budget to know how much you will need to set up a program like this and it depends again of the country and uh, if it is already all prepared for you if the building you're going to have the place you're going to have your restaurant and health center exist already which is the best approach you can lease it and you can restore it if it needs to be restored and then you can get ready with your program and the opening of other centers based on this model then another model is the basic country living so you can see that there are a lot of uh, things to consider so for us to read well it would be kind of irrelevant because we have it for you here it's prepared specifically for africa for zambia of course we are not submitting the budget we have been in, in, in uh, Zambia now a year, well, it's uh, since last March, 2020. So we have not quite a complete fiscal year, meaning that we started in March and the fiscal year of way of life is at the end of October. That's just the way it works. And so when we started in March, we were already a few months into the fiscal year. So when we close this October, 2020, we were, um, well, we went from March 2020 to October 2020. It was not a complete year. But now, the new year, November to March, well, we can have an idea of how much at this time last year we had um, already invested. We do not spend money when we do business, we invest. And of course, we have a vision which we will help our target groups in the future and we at we of life association incorporated want to offer the best and most advanced educational and tangible services to educate on health this is our call at all levels and create an awareness where lifestyle change may be necessary and you can learn that through the health evaluation and the eight laws of health to meet present day needs physical mental spiritual and social so we're covering a lot of area and as we said, it would be good if you could take time to read this important information. And that will give you also an overall idea of who we are and what we do. Now, the mission is to educate, prepare, train, be ready for upcoming challenges, whether personal, social, or international. This is in the light of we're dealing here specifically with the fact that we believe that Jesus is coming soon and this program will literally talk to us in the spirit of prophecy. And that's why Dr. Lee, when we look at this thesis of the 1970s, it was geared as far as preparing this kind of a program. So when this thesis came into my ends in the 1980, I proposed to myself that this is what I'm going to do and started working on it. And uh, basically, slowly but surely, now over the years, we have learned from sometimes mistake because we make mistake, but at the same time, mistake can be your experience, so don't be too hard on yourself. But we need to always keep focus on why we're opening those restaurants. This is not to feed a crowd of 500 people every day. You're, you're going to need a lot of staff for that. And then your overhead will be so high that you won't be able to maintain your business. The idea is not to feed the crowd. The food is to attract the crowd and it should be of the best quality. But once they enter into your premises, here you have a person that is reaching out to you because they're hungry. And then you have the capacity to fulfill that need 
and while they are in your air in your own area then you can reach out to them and give them a book or talk to them about their specific need and if they're discouraged and you have all kind of program you'll be able to offer to them we don't resolve all the problem of this world but this is an outreach program it's a way of stewardship where you give your time your energy your money to god's service and some people like myself i've always maintained my own business which i've had since the 1970 i'm an interior designer and after i left chemistry because of health reason i went and took my training in interior design so that has been my um basically like apostle paul he was building tent to be able to do his ministry while well, i i do buildings and houses so this is how i've been able to continue with this corporation so and don't expect a big gift if you don't need them anyways you won't need them if, uh, if the lord was to give you a million dollar maybe you wouldn't know what to do with it so don't pray for money money comes when the project is on the go and you're really targeting in the right area the lord will bless so here we have the services again and the outcome we ought to expect so once you have given the service you should expect that the people will receive a health awareness they will be willing to change you show them the health benefit. This will open up their mind as well. They will become more reachable. They will accept better. They will be also themselves willing and able to help others and prepared and ready to meet upcoming social international events. Also, the willingness to invest money. You understand the word invest. We don't spend money in this business. We always invest. And Stewardship is not just money, it's time and talents. Everything should be totally submitted to the Lord to do his great work. And we are not to use the Holy Spirit, he is to use us. You don't tell the Holy Spirit, give me this, give me that. That's not the way you work with the Holy Spirit. You study, you listen much, you pray much, and he will guide you. Now, for the professional development, again, this is the part that we're talking about. We could have called it stewardship but this is how we call it professional development so you've got to be willing to invest some money if you don't have any well money doesn't grow on trees don't ask people to give you money but perhaps develop something on the side that will bring you a certain um, amount of money and income to get you going and the major expansion is for us to target 13 better living center and most of the big countries you have a capital and you work with that capital first and then it expands when people you set a model small but many the people will want to do what you're doing all right so here we have a target priorities and goal for the next five years we started in 2020 so our plan is educational again and professional development and it's to offer more training program increase the treatment room program and services and reach out to more clients we should always do that don't forget your clients. Without clients, you have no business. You have to have clients either for physical reason because they're not well, spiritual reason because they're maybe discouraged or they, they want to know God, so moral as well and mental. So this is the target, again, that you need to always continue, continue, continue to focus on. So this is what we're saying here. We're going to focus on developing these new educational program and activities as our strategic goal for 2020-2025 in order to deliver the best educational services without neglecting those who are already in place as listed in this document. So mainly in Lusaka this past year, we have actually concentrated on training. And hopefully you see the result of training young people, very important because they're the future, they're the people who can uh, they have a lot of energy and they're very smart they want to learn well give them your time invest your time and energy and you will be rewarded so now the professional development does not change we want to facilitate seminar workshop on the job training program self-supporting program we are not offshoot we're self-supporting programs we work hand in hand with the teaching of the church this corporation is not under the church it's not affiliated with any denomination and we serve all denomination and all religions that's how we establish it according to the spirit of prophecy 
Mrs. White says our restaurant and health center should not be under the Seventh-day Adventist name. We're not representing the church. We're definitely wanting to reach out to the people. And it's a business. And the people come to know it that way. And then they will ask this, where did you learn all this? So where can I go for that? And, you know, and then you can say, oh, I'm a Seventh-day Adventist. And uh, this is where I've learned all this. So basic country living is very important and city living. Now, again, we have a strategic goal statement for 20, 2025. And again, it's directly connected with Lusaka, Zambia, because that's where we are right now. And it's to expand our professional development program and activity as our strategic goal for 2020-2025. So it's redundant. It seems to repeat itself, but it's always in a different approach. So this is the goal now we're mentioning. First, we were explaining to you what is our development, what we have done in planning. And now the goal is to continue to expand. So that's why we need more people. So here we have the first one was established in Zambia last year. And it opened up in last year. And it's a it's a nice little place. And the overhead is manageable. And uh, basically, it's keep on going. That's how the Lord bless. So now, when you look at the restaurant, we do not have that targeted yet because we concentrated more on being a, a school teaching the young people, teaching adults how to become lifestyle educators. You got to build your nest. You got to build the people that will be working with you and they need to be trained too. So this, we have also to look at um, the mission goal, facility and financing to be secured, forecast budget available upon request, set up rules and regulation model after franchise business, though not a franchise. And the reason why franchise are mentioned because it's a very well-known pattern of um, business. You can repeat it. You can have a model and people come just like McDonald's and all these fast food restaurants, which we do not eat, but we surely see them. They have been in business now for many, many years and they have not changed because they're a franchise. Meaning that if we had a pattern that works, why not follow it? So this is what we have done with Way of Life, and this is what we're trying, trying to encourage the people. We're not looking for people to come under the umbrella of Way of Life. They want to be trained by us and work with it. They can definitely run after and do their own things and start their own business. That's not the, the goal of our mission and our mission to gather as many people as possible. It's to teach as many people as possible. We're a school, we're educators, so we want to teach people and make them see how enjoyable this work is. Now, we at We of Life Association Incorporated believe these goals and mission outreach can be achieved by His grace and approval and the support of those who believe the time is near of His second coming. As architects and designers do, let us follow the blueprint, which is that blueprint is specific, measurable, achievable, relevant to the mission and timely. So here we have finish our lesson or our presentation just in time and we definitely want to encourage you to go over it again and please feel free to ask questions after this presentation and if the answer cannot be given i'm sure we can find it no question as a question has never no value so it's important you let us know may the lord bless you and cause his face to shine upon you and give you peace